Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book, Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. In another video in this series, I've talked about how, using techniques in the book, you can measure the actual pressure that's occurring on body panels of the car as you drive along. You can find out if the pressures are low, you can find out if the pressures are high. What I want to do in today's video is talk about how you can resolve those pressures into working out what sort of forces are occurring and the direction of those forces. Now, before I talk about doing that, let's talk about the two directions of forces that we're most interested when we're looking at car aerodynamics. One set of them are horizontal and one set of them are vertical. Now, what do I mean? Well, let's start off with the vertical forces. A vertical force acting on the car upwards, we call lift. A vertical force pushing downwards on the car, we call downforce. So they're always acting vertically. What about horizontal forces? Well, a force pulling back on the car, we call drag. A force pushing forward on the car, we call thrust. And we don't mention thrust very often in car aerodynamics, but it is an important aspect, as you'll see in just a moment. So if we're measuring pressures on the body of the car, how do we work out how much thrust they're likely to be causing, or drag, or how much downforce they're likely to be causing, or lift. Well, let's look at this marvellous picture I've drawn of a car, and let's put some airflow on it. So I'll show some airflow coming around the car like that. Now, of course, by measuring pressures and by actually wall tufting, we can actually determine whether that airflow is really occurring. We don't have to guess on our cars, as I've guessed a bit on this particular diagram. Now, we know the airflow is wrapping around the curves here, and what I want to do is concentrate just on this curve at the top of the windscreen, at the start of the roof, as it were. We know that there will be a low pressure, and we can measure it by using our, our pressure sensor and, and measuring on the road. Now, how much downforce is that causing? How much lift is that causing? How much thrust is that causing? How much drag is that causing? Now, the first step in determining that is to draw in what's called a vector, which is just a force arrow. And let me do that. So we're going to draw in a force vector at right angles to the body surface. So here, we will draw in a force like that. So that's got a little arrow head on the end. Now, you might say, how do you do that? Well, we know that there's a low pressure there. We know the low pressure is acting at right angles to the body surface. So I've drawn an arrow that reflects the force being developed by that low pressure. Now here's the interesting bit. Obviously it doesn't have any downforce. Obviously it doesn't have any drag because it's not pointing towards the back of the car. So how much lift does it have and how much thrust does it have? The way we decide that is to draw in what's called the parallelogram of forces. So we can come down to here, we can go across to there, end up with in this case a triangle. If we filled in all the rest of the forces it would become the parallelogram. So we've got that much thrust, and we've got that much lift. Now can you see those two arrows and see how those two arrows reflect the two forces that this first arrow is? But now we've resolved them into vertical forces and horizontal forces. So the airflow wrapping around the windscreen, top of the windscreen, where it transitions to the roof, has a component of thrust, but it has a much bigger component, in this case, of lift. Now, if we change the shape of the car, and we drew that, that first arrow that reflects that, that change of shape, we would see different things occurring. So for example, if we go to the back of the car, and we draw the arrow that's reflective there, of the force that must be occurring, because we know that if we measure there, we'll find a low pressure as the airflow wraps around there. And then we draw in, picking my right color, and then we draw in the two components, we can see it's developing more drag than it is lift, though the two are fairly close together. Now, by drawing in arrows like this, working out what the horizontal component is, working out what the vertical component is, you start getting a feel for how much thrust it's developing, how much drag is developing, how much lift is developing, and obviously on the top surfaces of the car, 
uh, unless there's a wing there, you're very unlikely to get much downforce. So you can get a feel for how the pressures are reflected in the forces, which are then reflected in either vertical forces or horizontal forces. And if you want to check your workmanship, check that, that you're making sense, uh, you can have a look at the uh, pressure distributions, drag distributions uh, from mainstream car manufacturers that, that show their CFD, their computational fluid dynamics uh, uh, representations, and you'll see that this approach actually works very well. It's very reflective of their modeling, and of course, if you actually measure them on the car, it's also reflective of reality. So it's called putting in the vectors of the forces, resolving the vector as horizontal and vertical forces, but we really don't have to worry about the names. All we have to worry about is making sure we end up with arrows that reflect those and actually still form that right angle that I've drawn there. It's all in the book. It's called Modifying the Aerodynamics of Your Road Car. It's out now, and I think you'll find a lot in it that's of great interest. Thank you.